Hi, a very warm welcome to Dusty Shelf Collectibles. Well, this one I picked up at one of the train fairs. I forget, I forget which one. Um, I did pay a little bit more money than I should have done for this, I think. But anyway, in my research, I found out that it's uh, Graham Farish, um, obviously a uh, die-cast body in double O gauge. Um, I did wonder if it was the right chassis for the body, and I believe it is. I believe it's correct. Um, you can see here the, the cross heads and things all hanging off of the uh, chassis. Um, it also looks like some of the brackets are missing to fix the body on there. So I've found one of these, which is uh, just off of another Hornby model. Um, the rods on here are slightly too short for this chassis, so they need modification. Obviously the the bits that are hanging down here need some modification and as I say we need to make some brackets. So this is just a project to try and get this loco back into some sort of order and see if we can get it running around and looking good on the layout again. Lovely weight, lovely looking loco, um, motor's very very clean, I mean it runs, you know it turns over beautifully on the test track but um, as I say just needs a little bit of fettling and to be fair I've spent a lot of time staring at this wondering how to do it. So it's going to be a bit hit and miss and uh, yeah, let's see how we go. Anyway, another project loco, so uh, let's take it over the bench and get cracking. So the plan was with this video to uh, do this as a project on camera, but I've ended up spending an awful lot of time um, just trying to get a plan on how to put this back together. So let me talk you through where I've got to. First things first, I... 3D printed some cylinders which are here, they've all been finishing, they're just rough at the moment and dropped a couple of rods in, in the front there. So those are sitting, one of them's slightly askew at the moment so that needs a lining. And then dropping the chassis in, I found that I've created a little tab here that this hooks underneath um, and I'm not still not convinced this is the chassis for this uh, this body um, when this is in you can see it's sitting quite high but it's catching it's just touching you can see the witness mark there it's taken me a couple of hours to find that and it's a direct short obviously onto the uh, onto the wheel in fact the wheel you can see a little pitting all the way around where it's been sparking against itself um, so a little spacer block in there temporary for now that uh, will stand that stands the wheel off but as I say it does seem to stand quite high then on the rear, it came with, I've lost the little bracket, there was a little bracket, there it is, this little bracket that came on there, that didn't seem to fit anything, that was on the chassis, so I've got rid of that, just put a bent bit of tin in there for now, and um, that sits in there quite nicely. So, next job, I'm going to realign this piston, the one that's uh, slightly crooked, if you look down on it you can see this one's slightly skew, so I'll just uh, break the glue, twist that around, re-glue it. Then these, where they've been 3D printed, I need to get a smooth finish on them. So I'm going to put some filler on there and uh, rub those back very gently and then give this all a, a dusting over at the front of the train. Um, and then we'll think about sort of reassembling it and, uh, yeah, seeing if we can get this one running. Right, let's just, uh, I'll straighten that piston up. Um, I'm just going to bend these uh, rods out slightly. If we can Right, I'm going to take this off and start cleaning up this metal plate. Um, we don't need it right out to the edge here because it's visible. Um, and there's also um, some little brass features that are holding the, the piston off. So I want to just file those down as well. So let's just take this out. Yeah, you can see how, how crude <laughs> my, little, uh, my little plate is here. I'm just going to bend it back flat. Um, yes, yeah, so as I say, just three, 3D printed a couple of cylinders on there and then added this, this plate on there. But what I want to do is just chop this back away from the cylinders a little bit. That's one. And that's two. Come on. I'm just going to file that edge down. Okay, and that 
one. This one. And this one. Okay, that's better. Right. And these are the little ridges. You see these little pieces of bronze or brass in there that uh, they just hold it. Actually, the copper rivets, what am I talking about? So I'm just going to try and take the down a little bit. That's it. I think I said on one of my other videos, if you want to rub something back, just uh, get a small piece of wood and glue your wet and dry paper onto it, and uh, gives you a nice flat edge to, to sand back with. Right, that's uh, rubbed back to some extent, so I'm just going to put a little bit of masking tape over the uh, over the rods, guides, whatever you want to call them, crosshead guides. I think that's their proper name, isn't it? So just cover those over. Just keep the paint off of them. I'll do the same on the other side. my uh, old spring board and uh, scrub some paint. to dry well, I'm waiting for that paint to dry I was just looking over the uh, the chassis and uh, it's brand new I mean I, I was going to clean it all but there's no need there's not a you know a little bit on the armature but nothing nothing major so I think I'll just leave that as it is and uh, not disturb anything so um, the, the other thing I need to do is I, I don't have the paint. I thought I had some. I was just going to touch in that little edge there. Where it's just got a little knock, but uh, yeah, that's for another day. I'm pretty sure I did overpay for this. Um, I saw the body and I thought, oh, that's that's nice. I'll uh, jump on that. That'll look lovely on the railway. So just with the chassis, the body, I paid £20 for it. So um, it, as it's turned out, I mean, it, it's going to go together. It's going to run. I'm not overly happy with the way the wheels sit with the body, but um, that's the way it's got to be. As I say, this uh, this body, you can see with the wheel, it's just catching on there. You can see the paint's missing um, and causing a direct short. So, as I say, what I've had to do is just raise it very slightly to give me some clearance by putting a little packing piece in here to uh, to try and hold it hold it away from the the body and stop the direct short. So I'm just waiting for that paint to dry on here. It shouldn't take too long now. It's looking pretty good. Um, finish has come up lovely. I mean, just putting the filler on there. If you haven't done any 3D printing before, um, it, every year that goes past with the machines are getting better and better. Mine's a very, very old one. It's a very early one and it's not that accurate. So when I print, although it's set to fine, I end up with marks on the surface. But um, I've always found just a you know little bit of filler over there and a, just rubbing it back and you, you get a pretty good finish. It's not bad at all. So um, yeah, I'll just take this tape off. Yeah, quite pleased with that. Make that making that from scratch. Um, let's say printed these two bits. These are actually uh, just old nails that uh, I've obviously cut the head off and uh, just glued in there. And um, 
yeah little piece of aluminium there that uh, I just cut cut from some sheet and shaped appropriately so yeah it's not not, not come out too bad at all right, let's drop these in Sure, they're straight. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, and then the chassis. Need to get both of these on both sides and line the body up before it all just drops into place. And it's a little bit fiddly. It's quite a uh, a different design. I think I said this is, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this is Graham Farish, which uh, I didn't actually know that they did any uh, double O locos, but uh, clearly they did because there's one in my hand. Yeah, Graham Farish to me is synonymous with the uh, N gauge. Um, right, just one this in there. And uh, we've got to drop these two on, so I think, I can't remember which way around they go now. This looks like the rear one, this looks like the front one. Yep. Yeah, I'm missing a coupling off of this one. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've got a spare one of those. Wait for another day. Right. The rear one's quite uh, quite fun to get in. You have to lift this plate underneath, and it actually sits over a peg. But in lifting the plate, all of the uh, the wheels can fall out. I don't particularly want to do that, so just going to gently lift it up. Right, back together. Let's go and uh, see how it runs. Right, so let me just do a quick recap on this one. So I bought it, I think it was the Bristol Fair. Um, I paid £20, if I remember rightly. And the pistons and the crosshead uh, guides were missing. Um, and there was elastic band around the body and around the chassis. No identification on it at all. So, uh, yeah, I took a took a gamble on it and bought the two bits i mean it's a die cast body and the body's in not bad condition obviously some of the paint on it needs a needs a little bit of a touching and uh you know could do with a little bit of a clean up but uh, it looked pretty good at the time so on further investigation i believe this is graham farish um i don't didn't realize that actually that graham farish had made any double o locos um i thought it was all engage but uh, indeed they, were, they did do double o so i've learned something there um, I looked through all my scrap boxes looking for a replacement part for here, couldn't find anything that's suitable. Uh, so I went down the route of just scratch building a part to go in there. Um, I was going to create a whole video about how I did all the uh, 3D printing etc and I, I thought I'd save that for another day. Um, so my machine, it's uh, quite an old 3D printer, it's not the, uh, the most accurate anymore, I mean there's much better ones on the market. But um, it certainly was good enough to print these two pistons and uh, yeah, cleaned them up with a little bit of filler and sort of scratch built those to go in the front there. That would have been nice to have a little bit more detail around here. I mean, it's, it's quite basic, quite rudimentary. But moment of truth. 
it's functional. That's the main thing. So I can, you know, this one can. It's functional. That's the main thing. So uh, I'm quite pleased to see the loco back together in some form. So anyway, I'll leave this one there. Um, if you haven't subscribed, have a look at the other videos. If there's anything there that interests you, um, please consider subscribing and please consider liking this video. You'll be doing me a big favour. And um, yeah, I'll leave this one there. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.